Okay, so I wanted to show you, I'm making some British um, flags because I am making this British journal and I haven't found a lot of flag ephemera besides the stuff that I've like printed out. Like when I made this video, I printed that from the internet. Um, so I want to make a British flag. This is um, four by six watercolor paper. And um, so what I'm going to do is I've looked up the British flag to see what it looks like. And oh, um, I have my koi watercolors and I have a um, angled brush. That's what I like to use when I'm trying to do straight lines. So um, I'm going to take my red. Oh, shoot. I actually like to paint it in first. Um, and I'm obviously, I'm just freehanding. You could totally draw with a pencil and a ruler, but I'm just painting in, um, with water and my water is tinted kind of red. Um, but you could use clear water. So I'm just putting, I'm just wetting the paper where I want the red to go. Okay. So this is the beginning of the British flag. Okay, and it's all nice and wet. And now when I put my red in, and I can put it in anywhere, it'll start to bleed. Okay, if I tilt it down, it'll go down. And if I tilt it that way, it'll go that way. So, and just remember that your um, watercolor will dry lighter than... Um, it looks here. So choose your red wisely. So, and you can leave it like kind of watercolory if you want to, or you can fill it in. So that's step one to making the British flag in watercolors. And I just so happened, um, I had actually been planning to do this. So I have one that is dry. Okay, and then the next step, you do want to let it dry because you are, um, you don't want the watercolor to bleed because the next thing I'm going to do is blue. And so I'm going to, again, take my just water and paint in where I want the blue to go. And this just re-wets the paper. Um, I'm not an expert watercolor at all, but... I do know that this helps. And so I'm drawing in these blue, these triangles that will end up being blue. And just with my water. And I have a blue picked out that I think is a nice blue for this. Definitely a royal blue. And so you can see you just kind of add in the blue. And, and you don't have, like I said before, you don't have to fill it all the way. And you can let the watercolor do its thing and be all flowy. And that's why we like watercolor, right? Um, so I feel kind of lost my place here. I have a couple lights on. It's pretty bright here. So that is the next step and I like to dry in between each step and you could use like a um a dryer hair dryer probably not a hair dryer but like a heat gun um and if there was areas where it pools you can either move it left and right or you can um sop it up with a little bit of a paper towel or even a dry brush if you just hear some extra water here I can just sop it up with my dry brush so that's step two put this over here then once it's dry it'll look like this and step three is to put in the side triangles so again I'm going to use just water and put in a triangle there and a triangle there make sure I'm doing it right I can hear my sweet sweet two-year-old 
screaming in the other room. She has a little bit of a cold. Poor girl. I was up with her most of the night. Ended up just letting her sleep right on top of me. If you are parents, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, she'll be fine. But it's not fun to be two and have a cold. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just filling in where I had put the water. And what I like about putting the water first is it kind of guides the watercolor. Um, even if you tip it up, I'll show you here. Even if you tip it up, it's... If you just gently tip it, it's not going to run. See, there's that big bead of watercolor there, but it's not running because the paper's not wet there. So it'll only go where the paper is wet. So that's really nice. So that's the next step. And then when it dries, it looks like this. And then we have to put in the red. And I have to, hold on one minute. So I'm going to put in my red and um, this is where it gets kind of tight. Like I said, I'm using a four by six piece of paper and I have to put in a little red line here. So I'm just going to do it freehand. I do have one that's done that I'm kind of looking at, um, but it's closer to this triangle right here. And this is where it's so nice to have it dry, the previous layers dry. Um, so, and this is also where it's so nice to have a, um, angle brush. You can see I did kind of nick it right there, but that's okay because the blue is dry. So it's not going to go into, the red's not going to go into the blue and the blue is not going to go into the red. So I like the look of hand drawn hand painted things in that they aren't perfect and that's what I like about them um and you can even go back this way this is why an angle brush is so incredibly helpful and or any you know if you had a flat brush or even a filbert brush so um yeah, that's my British flag. Um, here's another one that I did, and I kind of want to show you this one because you can see here I didn't paint in all of the blue, and so it gave it that really watercolory look. So, yeah, that's my video. Um, if you want to try your hand at watercolor painting, I definitely think you should just give it a go. It's all it is is paper and not too expensive watercolor paints. So, um, water and a brush. This is not a, this is not a, um, this is a, what does that say? Craft smart. It is not a watercolor brush. Um, but I, but I use it. So, um, there's my little tutorial. Um, I love hand painting things like this. So this is going to go on my British journal. If you liked this video, would you give me a thumbs up? Thank you so much. Bye-bye.